There was an expectant hush in the magic forest. All the animals, trees and flowers seemed to be holding their breath. If anyone dared to say anything at all, then it was whispered really softly. Is it time yet? The mouse squeaked even more shyly than usual. Shh! The old tree commanded in an imposing voice. Shall I go and have a look? asked the squirrel. No, don't, Bushy, the turtle replied. You will make way too much noise rustling in the leaves. We must be patient. But to remain patient was difficult for the animals. Restless, the squirrel kept jumping up and down. Well, if you think I make too much noise, perhaps the bird could go and have a look. He really is very quiet, he begged. Of course, the old tree would never have admitted to anyone how curious he was himself. He had, in fact, actually been toying with this very idea himself. You youngsters just can't wait, can you? He grumbled. Well, all right then, the bird shall go and have a look. Relieved that he had something to do at last, the bird took off and flew away. The animals who were left behind became more and more nervous. You could almost feel the tension in the air. Suddenly there was a loud cheer. Hooray! Hooray! It could be heard all across the forest. Hooray! It's here! It's here! The bird was fluttering excitedly above the trees. That was the end of the silence in the forest. Everyone was chattering at the same time. What does it look like? Has it already got a name? Can we visit it? Just go on over, said the old tree. Give it my regards and tell it I'm waiting for its visit. Full of expectation, the animals ran, jumped, and hopped away. Mother Deer looked at her baby with pride. Father Stag, too, was watching his fawn with benevolence. Suddenly he raised his ears. I think we're going to have visitors, he said. Oh, how pretty, how lovely. The animals were whispering to each other. It's the prettiest little fawn that's ever been born in the magic forest. It really looks golden, the squirrel said enthusiastically. What's its name? Clover the rabbit asked. We don't know yet, said the father. We haven't had time to think of a name. But Bushy's just found it, said the mother deer. Bushy was surprised. I have? I've given it a name? He asked, full of amazement. Yes, Mother Dear Love. Didn't you say the little fawn looks golden? So Goldie is the right name for my daughter. Goldie, what a nice name, Bushy said happily. He had found the name for the new dear baby. Now that, in Bushy's eyes, was a commitment. Bushy swore to himself he would look after Goldie always and everywhere, and that he would never leave her alone. Soon, Goldie learned to run and jump. Bushy became her best friend. He played and rollicked around with Goldie all day long. Bit by bit, Bushy showed his friend around the forest. He proudly introduced her to all the other animals and they really enjoyed all the visits by the two friends. The animals took Goldie more and more into their hearts every day because she was always friendly and cheerful. And when the two friends had rollicked around enough, they went to see the old trees. They lay down beneath the branches and listened to the trees' stories. The trees had been living in the forest for a very long time, even longer than the old turtle. And so they could talk about times when there were still buffalo and wild bears roaming freely and a human being was rarely seen in these parts. These days, however, the trees taught Goldie, one should be very wary of human beings, as they would swarm into the forest, especially on a Sunday afternoon, and disturb the peace and quiet of the animals. And sometimes, the trees warned, hunters would come into the forest and shoot or even kill animals with their guns. As Goldie had never seen a human being before, she didn't really believe these stories. But even without human beings, the forest could be a dangerous place, as Goldie found out rather quickly. 
Every day, Goldie and Bushy played in the meadow. It was nearly summer, and every there were beautiful blossoms of all colours. Goldie was watching the bees as they were busily collecting pollen. She found one of the bees particularly pretty and tried to nudge it with her nose again and again. The bee enjoyed this very much and played tag with Goldie. Watch out! Bushy shouted, but it was too late. Goldie had fallen into the pond and was thrashing wildly with her legs. The water's not so deep, Bushy shouted. You can stand up. And indeed, when Goldie stopped kicking around, she noticed her legs were on solid ground. She quickly jumped out of the pond. Bushy laughed so hard his stomach hurt. And the bee was also giggling away. Stop laughing, you two. That could have happened to you just as well. Not to me, the bee said cheerfully. And I always look where I'm going. Bushy said, full of self-confidence. Goldie pouted. But not for long, because the day was just too pretty to sulk. In the evening, when Goldie and Bushy went home, they were really tired. Goldie's mother was usually waiting for the two friends at the edge of the clearing, but today nobody was to be seen. Worried, they both looked round. Very strange, Goldie said. Where could she be? Goldie and Bushy searched the area and searched again until dawn. They asked all the animals whether they'd seen Goldie's mother, but nobody knew anything. Tired and sad, Goldie and Bushy lay down to sleep. The next morning they started the search all over again. They searched for many hours, but in vain, and eventually they sat down in the meadow and were utterly depressed. What's the matter with you? They suddenly heard a voice. Can I help you with anything? It was Clover, looking for his tea. Oh, Clover, Goldie wailed. My mother's disappeared and nobody's seen her. We've already asked all the animals in the forest. Oh, dear. Clover was terrified. That sounds bad, but I thought it was something like that. Goldie and Bushy jumped up. Do you know anything? Have you seen anything? I hope I'm wrong, but I'm afraid I'm right, Clover said. Yesterday at about lunchtime, I was hopping around the meadow over there with my children and I came really close to your clearing and suddenly it went dark, but it wasn't the sun setting. Huge shadows were falling onto the grass. Clover became very quiet. It was humans. Humans? Goldie shouted horrified. Did they have guns? Did they kill my mother? I don't know. As soon as we noticed them, we ran off quickly. But I didn't hear any shots. And then what happened afterwards? I don't know, Clover replied sadly. Clover would have liked to comfort Goldie, but didn't really know how. So he slowly hopped away. Let's go and talk to the trees. They've seen so much, perhaps they know what has happened, Bushy suggested. They quickly ran to the trees and told them what Clover had told them. Oh dear, said the trees, that sounds bad. No one who has ever had anything to do with human beings has ever come back to our forest. From that moment on, nobody could hear Goldie's laughter anymore in the magic forest. With doleful eyes, she sat in the meadow without saying a word. The other animals missed her laughter and her rollicking. And after a while, they too became sadder and sadder. The magic forest turned into a silent place. Even the birds cheeped their messages to each other quietly. One might almost have thought that even the sun didn't shine as brightly as before because the forest grew darker and darker.
One day, an old wandering bear came into the magic forest on his travels. Astonished, he looked around. Was this really the same forest he'd known as a young cub? In those days, it had been quite bright here and everyone had seemed so happy. He decided to rest near the old trees. Hello, old tree, he said. What's been happening here? Why are you all hanging your heads? Shh, the tree said, because the bear had spoken in a very loud voice, and nobody in the magic forest had done that for a long time. Bear was amazed. If you're not allowed to speak up any more, then you're in a bad way indeed. Now tell me, there's always a way in which people can help. Not in this case, answered the tree. Listen, many months ago we were all still happy and were having a lot of fun, but then something terrible happened. And the old tree told the bear the story of Goldie and the disappearance of her mother. The bear listened, full of interest. Is there a way to recognise Goldie's mother? he asked. Yes, Goldie's mother has a white patch on her right front leg. That is something very special. Well, in that case, I've seen Goldie's mother, claimed the bear. You've seen her? She's alive, the tree exclaimed. She's alive! The bird sitting on the branch of the old tree had heard everything and cheeped loudly. She's alive! He rose up into the air and repeated, She's alive! Startled, the animals looked up. Have you heard? The bird said she's alive. They were whispering because they didn't dare talk too loudly yet. But there were so many of them whispering and the whisper became noisier and noisier and eventually the entire magic forest was rustling. She's alive! Goldie's mother is alive! Goldie, who was still sitting sadly in the meadow, heard this as well. She's alive! She looked up with disbelief. The bear has seen your mother. She's alive. The bird shouted excitedly. Goldie jumped up. Where's the bear? By the old trees, the bird replied. And at long last, after all this time, Goldie ran away with long strides. Stop. Slow down. Bushy shouted and hopped after her. Goldie called out as soon as she arrived by the old trees. That is a long and sad story, said the bear. Meanwhile, all the other animals had gathered by the old trees. <laughs> Listen, began the bear. As you know, many thousands of animals are killed by the humans. But not <gasps> always. Sometimes we are just caught and the humans lock us up. Why do they do that? Clover asked. I'm not exactly sure, the bear shrugged. In any case, they give us just a small piece of earth and then they build such a high fence with spikes around that it becomes impossible to jump over it and escape. And then what happens to the captured animals? The mouse squeaked. Well, something really strange happens. Every day, many humans come up to the fence and look through it. We never have a moment of peace. We are always being watched. There's no place where we can go and hide from them. That's absolutely horrifying. But that's not everything, the bear said. Often, the humans bring along drinks and food, and then they throw the empty cans and bottles behind the fence. <gasps> You mean where the animals are? Bushy asked. Exactly there, the bear said. And often the animals hurt themselves on the pieces of glass or tins. And Goldie's mother? I've seen Goldie's mother in just such an enclosure. Is she injured? Goldie asked in horror. I don't know. I don't think so. But she is sick. Sick? The old tree moaned. Is it bad? Yes, unfortunately so. Because the humans don't walk to the fence, they come in big cars. And these cars make a terrible noise and pollute the air. And the animals have to breathe in this poisoned air all day long. Which is why Goldie's mother is coughing all the time and has become ill. Can't she get away from there? Bushy asked. The bear shook his head. Tears were running down Goldie's cheeks. And even the trees began to sniffle. Oh, come on, that's impossible, Clover said brashly. There has to be a way to free the animals. It's just not been tried before. But didn't you hear what the bear says? The fence is too high to jump over it. Yes, too high, that's true. But who says there's only one way across the fence? Perhaps there's a way to get in underneath it. Under the fence, the animals shouted. That's the idea. Then off we go, 
the bear said. The animal started to move. It was an exhausting journey. It took many, many hours. They saw the fence. Goldie wanted to run up to it. Stop, ordered the bear. We have to wait here until it's dark and the humans have gone home. Or do you want to be caught as well? The animals hid themselves behind the tall hedge. At last it became quiet and the last car drove off. Right, let's go, the bear whispered. Carefully they all sneaked towards the enclosure. The captured animals huddled together tiredly in a small spot. They all looked very sick. Mum, Goldie called softly. But when she did not react, she called a bit louder. Mummy! Very slowly, Mother Deer turned her head. Goldie, she whispered weakly. All the animals were quiet with emotion. Clover was the first to regain his composure. <clears throat> I'm as glad as you are, he said, breathing deeply, but we must get to work now. We want to free all of you, Clover said proudly, and we also know how to do it. All of a sudden, the animals had all disappeared. <laughs> Where have they all gone? Goldie's mother asked. Can't you hear them? Goldie replied. Mother Deer raised her ears, and then she could hear it herself. There was a nibbling and scratching everywhere. The rabbit, the squirrel, the mice, and all the animals with sharp teeth were busily nibbling away at the fence, while the moles dug deep holes underneath. Without a break, they worked for many hours. That should be enough now, Clover said at last. If you can make yourselves very small, you can slip through the fence. Full of doubt, the captured animals came nearer. Come on, who's going to be first? The bear asked. I'm sure it'll work, you'll see. Goldie's mother made herself as small as she possibly could and really did manage to crawl through the fence. The animals cheered. Hush, hush, Clover said. We can celebrate later. But first of all, the others have got to get out of there as well. While Goldie and her mother were cuddling each other, the other captured animals made their escape through the fence. And now let's get away from here as quickly as possible. It's already getting light, the bear warned. It was a strange procession moving towards the magic forest at dawn. They had to rest frequently because some of the animals were injured and very weak. But they made it. They're coming, the bird shouted. They all gathered under the old trees for a big celebration. And at last, after many weeks and months, everybody in the magic forest was happy and cheerful again. And even the rays of the sun were dancing full of joy on the leaves of the bushes and trees. Thank you.